Hey guys, this is a vision and this is my tour baggage. I have two places that I would if if I had to move from where I'm at now, um actually three that I really love, right? So um the first one is Amsterdam. Uh, when I first went to ADE about two years ago, it was my first time going, I fell in love with the city. Like it was just so cultural and I, I just love the style of the city. And for me, it's always good vibes. Even though it's always raining there, I, I always just loved Amsterdam. Um, the second city, last year I went to um, Cefalu in Sicily with my family. Um, it was my first time in Sicily. My my nono, my grandfather's from Sicily. So it was really, really cool experience. Um, I would love like a summer place in Cefalu. Like it was gorgeous. Um, this, the, the town just really made me feel at home. It made me feel really comfortable. So um, that would be uh, a second option. And honestly, if I had one more and like it's a lot closer to home, I would probably move to, there's a town called uh, Cape May in New Jersey. Um, and I just have years of experience, not experience, uh, years of like tradition there. Like every summer we've gone down there as a family uh, for the last 26 years of my life, I've been there every summer. And I always said like, I, I need a house down there. So those would be my three. When I travel, bro, I, it's like when I travel, I don't get in trouble because I'm, I'm just literally playing my gig and then I'm, I'm going home or I got another flight. You know what I mean? Um, I'm, I'm always in and out, so I don't stay too, too long. Um, last time I got in trouble or the last time a guard got brought up to like the hotel was, I think it was my friend's birthday in Atlantic City, which is like a huge uh city in New Jersey it's like casinos and everything like that so it's kind of crazy um, we were all drunk and one of my best friends like literally like was just wasted he was gone so we filled up the bathtub and put him in the bathtub fully clothed we were extremely loud and, and like you know we were drinking still the bottles were falling on the floor everything was crazy and the guards called up and they're like, listen, you gotta, you gotta fucking chill out or you're gonna get kicked out. And then that, that was probably the last time, honestly. That was like maybe like three or four years ago. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of mellow. You know what I mean? I keep to myself kind of. My friends are wild. Don't get me wrong. We all have fun. Um, but I'm definitely not a troublemaker for sure. I don't like getting in trouble. Um, this past summer, well, last summer, I went to Ibiza for the first time. It was my first time playing, it was my first time. Last year was like my first experience of going to Europe as a whole, and I was blown away. But I mean, just, just, I don't mean to sound cliche, but Ibiza is just like, it was like a dream come true for me. So it was like, ever since I was a 13 year old kid, I was looking up videos of DJs playing, you know, everywhere in Ibiza and, and just getting to see, you know, Amnesia and, and unfortunately I didn't get to see space obviously, but just to see those clubs that I've looked at for so long and saying like, wow, I can't wait to be there one day. That was like, kind of like, holy shit. Like this is, this is crazy. You know, I always tell my friends, like, I always tell them like, yo, you know, when you fly into like a new state or like, say you fly into New York, you see like, uh, a Yankee hat, you see like memorabilia from New York. I say, you fly into Ibiza and there's club stores. I was like, there's no teams, There's it's all clubs. It's hysterical. I was like, yo, you see billboards everywhere, just DJ's faces. It's like, you know, DJs are like the real celebrity down there. It's 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 wild. It's, it's an island dedicated for our music and our culture, you know? All right, I'll tell you two stories, right? One, I was in Los Angeles, um, and I get out of the elevator, and 
Al Pacino is in the lobby, like right there. And I was like, holy shit, that's Al Pacino. That's fucking, that's crazy. Um, but that wasn't like too, too crazy, but it was just insane to just see Al Pacino. Like that's a legendary actor, you know what I mean? Um, but I would say a pinch me moment was last year. I, last year, a lot of great things happened for me, right? It was like my full first year of touring. Um, musically, everything was just coming out. Everything was just lined right. Um, so last year, I would say I played in Spain a few times. I played in Madrid uh, at Summer Story Festival. And then I played um, at Pasha in Barcelona. And then I played um, in Trujillo, which is, I played in a castle that was built before Christ. And um, I was blown away. I mean, there was like three, 4,000 people. I played with Paco Asuna and he brought me out there. Um, and like, that was a big pinch me moment. That was just like, I'm playing. I look up, I see a sea of people and I'm in a castle. It was just like so surreal. And that's what told me, like, when I, when I went on to plug my USB stick, you know, I, I told myself, I'll never forget this, because, you, you know, as a kid, you always dream of, like, that big moment. You dream of, like, like that, that moment that's going to say, like, wow, you, you, you know, you, you accomplished your goal, in a sense. And I still have a lot more goals to accomplish, but in my head, I was just like, wow, man, you, you fucking, you, you did something here. You, you, you were able to as a 16 year old kid living that dream, you're able to, you know, finally make it come true. And and that's when I realized like, all right, I have a future in this, or I, you know, not, not that I didn't realize that prior, but it, it just made me realize like, things can happen when you work hard for them. And, and that was really an amazing moment. Like I was just shocked about the whole situation, you know? But yeah, that was, that was my pinch me moment. Yeah, and like the last like five years has just been me in this room, you know, like I've been constant, you know, like there's so much unreleased music right now, especially from this quarantine, but there was a lot of unreleased music before it, you know, and, and that's from those years of grinding and working hard towards something, you know, in my head, if I don't work on music like once a day or anything like that, I'm not, I'm not doing my part as an artist to be successful like there's another guy that's gonna work just as hard if not harder you know so i kind of hold myself to like a high standard when it comes to working i mean the castle was unreal but there's definitely been like some unique spots i would say um to be honest, Brooklyn Mirage in New York was a pretty unique spot because there's not many places like that. It's um, an outdoor venue, it's an open air venue. Um, I wouldn't say this is the most unique, but I would say the most relevant unique spot that I've played in, um, other than that castle within the last two years. Um, it, it's, it's an amazing venue, you know? Like you, they have um, levels outside where you can go up and you can get a whole view of the city pretty much and um the place fits like 5,000 people and it's unfortunate i was supposed to play with carl cox in march there and uh it it didn't happen obviously but um i've played there a few times and i mean it's it's an insane venue especially the outdoor venue i mean like it's it's crazy you you like you'll be playing and and they have these lasers that come down and like kind of just align with the crowd and like they're like right above the crowd's head and it makes you feel like the ceiling just dropped. It's crazy, it's it's really cool. Um, the production that they have there is impressive. I mean, everything at that venue is pretty impressive and it was good to see that it was happening in New York. Um, but I would say in the last two years, that castle in Spain and, and Brooklyn Mirage is, they're, they're special venues. Brooklyn Mirage is a special venue for sure. Um, yeah, that, that's, last big club in New York that I played at was like, I miss Pasha a lot. That was like my first real club that I played at. 
not too unique, but the, the cool factor of it was that it was called, it was before Posh, it was called a club called Sound Factory, which had a, a legendary history. So, I mean, that was pretty cool too. New York had so many unique clubs too. Like it sucks, my, my generation kind of missed that whole wave, but um, yeah, those would be my two, I'd say. Cool venue I've played at um, is in the New York, it's called New York Depot. Um, it was, I played with um, Adam Bayer and Eric Prids, and the party was pretty much in this huge warehouse but it looked kind of like Printworks, where it has the that like, uh, what do you call it? The mezzanine that just kind of lines up. Oh my God, dude, crazy. I mean, within the first hour of I was playing, there was like 2000 people already there, like lined up, ready to go. And then it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. By the time I turned around, took my whiskey, took a sip and turned back to the mixer. I was like, holy shit. There's like 5,000 people in front of me. You know, it was crazy. And it was cool to see that in New York too. I mean, really cool stuff. I'm pretty responsible. Like I don't miss my flights. Um, I get major anxiety if I miss a flight or if I come close to it. Um, but <laughs> I mean, Recently, the most recent one was probably, I was going to Toronto and I thought my flight was, I, I mixed up my returning flight and I went there at the wrong time and missed my flight completely. Um, Miami, M Music Week, I mean, there's always good stories after that. Like uh, I was with my cousin Victor, we were in Miami and you know, it was his birthday. So, I mean, we were just, it, it was just terrible getting to the airport. I mean, I was, I was on top of us, like I was making sure like we were gonna get there, but it was a struggle, man. I mean, we all have those nights where like every DJ can't can't say that they've never been like hurting in the airport. I think that's like just so like unrealistic. Everyone hurts in the airport. Whether you're drunk, fucked up, or tired, like it, all three of those, it all adds up. So I mean like, yeah, I, I would say like Miami Music Week is, it's always rough getting to the airport after. Um, Amsterdam too, I mean like, you you end up partying on Sunday into Monday and like usually my flights are on Monday night or you know, Monday afternoon. Getting to the airport and just going through everything, it's just like, oh my God. But um, I've never missed a flight coming home. I make sure I get my ass on a flight. Um, it's just a pet peeve of mine. I like coming home when when I'm like set to come home. So I, I do my best to get home. Say in the beginning stages of traveling, um, I would feel alone. Now I kind of have like friends wherever I go for the most part. I mean, like I was just, I played in Salt Lake City and over there I didn't have friends, but like for the most part, Throughout Europe, I always have someone. Um, but I mean, when I first started traveling, like I remember I was like, I just turned 21. I, I got to play in Denver and um, it was when the Paris bombings happened. And um, I was scared shitless just because I was, I was going to the airport the next morning and like, you never know what can happen. Like you never know if it's a planned attack against, you know, Paris, America. Um, then I felt alone and kind of like a little nervous. Um, I mean, there's always some sort of loneliness on the road, I guess. But like, I mean, half the time I'm I'm coming in for a few hours. I'm tired because I just sat on the flight. I'll take a nap. I'll go venture out into the city, and I'm only there for like maybe you know a few hours. But like in Europe, um, if I'm there for like two weeks or something like that. I usually have a friend or, or someone that I could hang out with. I've been pretty blessed with that. Like, I mean, making music and stuff like that. Um, you meet so many people and, and DJing, you meet so many people. So like eventually like the people that, you know, you end up talking to a lot become your close friends. Um, the most spectacular like um, 
just out of view and everything like that, I would have to say when I was in Chefalu, um, I had a room that was just was pretty much a villa at that point. Like I, I had a balcony that would just come out and all you see is just the mountain, the ocean, the beach, and you could see the whole city. And I mean like, I don't even care if there was bugs in my room at that point, like just the view alone, I would take my laptop outside and I would work on music for a little bit and like, wow man, it was just so inspiring. It was just crazy. But um, when you go to Europe, you would, like American hotels are a lot different than I would say like when I was in Italy, like all the, the elevators are small and everything. So uh, off the bat, you're not expecting that. But then once you see what their, what their culture's like and how rich the culture is and and how rich you know their their landscape is i mean like you forget all the little bullshit that you that you're used to at home because you just you realize how special it is over there once again i'm a vision and thanks for watching my tour baggage on rrp tv peace